Home prices have fallen again in a major Canadian housing market as potential home buyers hit pause in the face of higher mortgage rates. This time it's Toronto where prices and sales volumes in July fell once again from the month before. And once again, the Real Estate Board is calling on all three levels of government to make changes to rules and fees that affect housing supply and affordability. For more, we're joined by an expert. He's John Pasalas, president of Realosophy Realty. John, welcome to the show and thanks uh, for being here. Uh, any surprises in these numbers or is this what we would expect given the, the macro environment of higher interest rates and higher mortgage rates? Yeah, I mean, not at all surprising. Really a continuation of what we've seen the past few months uh, and, and really what we're seeing, all of these dynamics are really just about uh, you know, again, the transmission of, of monetary policy into the housing market, which is kind of one of the segments that first feels it. Uh, and what it's really doing right now is just destroying demand. I mean, and sales are, are, are unbelievable lows at 20 year lows. Uh, and that's really what's driving down home prices in the in the housing market right now. Uh, so what lies ahead? We know uh, with a, a, a quite a degree of certainty that more rate hikes from the Bank of Canada lie ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're going to continue to see a sluggish market as we move into the, the, the fall market. I don't think we're going to see any dramatic turnarounds. I mean, we might see a little bit more stability on prices. Uh, a lot of the declines we saw over the past few months were, were sellers who had bought and were effectively distressed because they needed to sell. And I think we're going to see less of that. Uh, so we may see a, a decline in the, in the rate of decline, uh, but we're probably going to still see a sluggish demand in the next uh, four months or so. What about affordability, which of course blends, among other things, uh, prices versus, uh, and borrowing costs? Are homes in Toronto becoming any more affordable? Well, I, I think, I mean, certainly the decline in, in prices is helping, but, you know, to, the, to the, the flip side, of course, is higher rates are making it higher or harder for people to actually afford housing. Um, you know, the, the reality is the stress test has only gone up a little bit, which is what people's borrowing capacity is based on, especially if you're going for a very low rate mortgage. Uh, you know, what people are just reluctant to take on debt because, you know, their mortgage payments are so much higher, even though the, the stress test was five and a quarter percent, uh, you know, just under a month ago, uh, people were taking on a lot of debt because their mortgage payments were in the in the one percent range, and and obviously that that pattern's reversing right now. And one one thing we see, of course, when uh, when uh, detached homes become more expensive, is more and more people opting to look for a condominium. And my understanding is the most recent data suggests condo prices are increasing uh, largely on that dynamic. Well, condo, pr condo prices are more resilient. They're not really uh, they're not really rising. They're just falling at a far slower rate. Uh, low rise homes now this month are actually down year over year. Uh, condo prices are still up year over year. So that's probably the tread numbers that, that the real estate board's reporting. Uh, but this again, I think a large is a, largely a function of the fact that the sellers are not as distressed in the condominium market. They're a little bit more patient. If they can't get the price they want, many of them are just taking them off the market and renting them because the rental market is so strong. Uh, so this is really supported kind of condo prices a little bit more uh, than low rise prices. Once again, TREB, the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, is imploring uh, governments, uh, uh, let's begin with the federal government, to make changes to mortgage rules. It thinks those stress tests that you've referred to need to be reassessed. Would that be a, a wise, and I think by, by reassessed it means relaxed. What, uh, would that be a wise move in this, in this market? I mean, it's not as irrational as it sounds. I mean, the, you know, the stress test was largely put in place uh, to, to curb how much debt people can take on when rates uh, were, were sort of trending down. So, you know, do people need to stress test today at seven plus percent uh, if they're getting a five-year mortgage? I mean, that's debatable. Uh, so, you know, I don't think it's as, as irrational as it was. I mean, again, the real estate board was calling them to relax it, even in a booming market. So we have to take their advice with a grain of salt. But I think today in today's market, it, it doesn't seem as, as irrational as uh, one might think. And uh, longer amortization periods of up to 40 years. Your thoughts there? You know, again, I think this is, I, I don't know if they need to do this again. This is really just about demand stimulus. I would not be surprised if the federal government looks at it, if we continue to see downward pressure on prices. Uh, but, you know, we, we don't need to necessarily extend amortizations. I mean, it, it's probably better to the market to adjust to a level that people can afford with 25 year amortizations. You know, we don't want to be paying off our mortgages for 40 years. So, 
Uh, I think it's probably more prudent to keep amortization levels the way they are, let the market adjust, and we'll reach a plateau that's a little bit more affordable for people. The, the uh, Real Estate Board also takes aim at uh, City of Toronto development charges. It says those charges, coupled with other government fees, uh, 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 add up to $350,000 for every new detached house and over $180,000 on a new condominium. Those are, those are awfully uh, big numbers uh, uh, on fees. Yeah, uh, and definitely the City of Toronto has increased them this year, and they, that was part of their, their budget and their planning. Again, not, not the certainly not uh, a, a good approach to stimulate and try to drive more demand. A lot of those, all of those costs effectively get passed on back on to home buyers, uh, which again makes housing more expensive. So, uh, not the best approach. I mean, I think the city of Toronto needs to look at other solutions to 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 budget for obviously those expenses that they need to incur. But adding them to the cost of housing uh, is certainly going against sort of what federal and provincial governments want, which is to stimulate more supply. Any advice uh, before we say goodbye uh, for somebody looking to buy, uh, let's say, a single family home, uh, detached home or a condominium in Toronto? You know, I think in this market, buyers need to be very patient. I think they can be a little bit greedy. Uh, the market is on their side and they need to be very careful what they're paying because prices are, are you know, trending down rapidly in some markets. And, you know, from from one month to the next, you know, prices are dipping four or five percent. So they need to be careful with the prices that they're paying. John,